Talk City where I talk about Ian Acho. Ian Acho also arrived in Nigeria in top shape with the former Manchester City ace grabbing his first Premier League goal of the campaign in that 2-2 draw that the side had uh, on Sunday in the Premier League. So uh, buzzing, the camp is absolutely buzzing when it comes to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Daisy Michael, how excited are you to know that we only have but one player you know, yet to arrive at the camp of the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Central African Republic in trouble? Well, um, of course, they've had, they have to be in trouble. You're up against the former African champions, uh, three-time African champions, actually. So uh, the pedigree is there. Lagos is buzzing. I, I think uh, Lagos is the place to be these days, given the fact that they host the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Uh, from time to time, we, see, we keep seeing them often. It's like they are our neighbors these days. They touch, touch down from their various you know, um, uh, bases over there in Europe, and then they come here, we watch them. Uh, they give us you know some good results and all that but um um we it's going to be a big release central african republic not much of a big threat they just got one point uh as against uh, the six points we've gotten you could see the gulf there but then uh, it's not yet time for us to start dancing uhuru because uh, there's still a whole, a whole lot of work to be done uh good to know that most players are in the camp good to know that uh, the big boys are in it as well they're wearing they're looking to you know go they are looking quite good at the moment but I, the last time around it wasn't so much of that uh, smooth waters with the Super Eagles of Nigeria uh, yeah they got result but there was this back and forth you know uh, splitted opinions here and there uh, how did they perform did we see free flow football did we see eye catching football did they actually entertain us did they uh, were they convincing were they dominant these were these were questions that were asked but this time around we hope that they can you know step it up further up a little bit you know switch through their guests now and give us something to cheer we want to smile we want to watch them and then we clap and say yes this is the super eagles of nigeria some players are missing obviously the linchpins of that team especially in the middle of the park yeah. quite missing uh, with friend did the, the best tackling midfielder as he, as he stands in world football now then we've got uh, organic character but who is bringing that combative nature of him and so much energy meet for them for sad these two guys will be greatly missed but then one man's meat is another uh, uh man's uh, uh, po- uh one man's po- uh, yeah, poison is another man's meat now and then i want to flip it but it's time for us to see the new legs now it's time for us to test the like the players have you know that have been brought on uh, board to replace them you know said bonke is one of them we're talking about Frank Unyeka, who has shown us that, I mean, he's also another midfield enforcer that we've not seen much of that can you know, hold it down. But it remains to be seen what these guys will do uh, when they get... Uh, then, of course, we have Joe Aribo, mm-hmm. although not really defensive-minded, but he can you know, he can also do a job. help back, yeah. of course, you know, help track back and help out in defence as the occasion arises. So, we want to see if these players can actually wrestle that shirt from the regulars, you know. Can they be a good backup going to AFCON in the next couple of months? What can they do when they travel away from home, apart from playing in Lagos, where the fans support and everything is with them? But I'm also happy that most of us are getting, most of our players now are getting 90 minutes of action, 70 minutes of action, 90 plus 5 minutes of action, that they get action week in, week out. We get to see them, we get to analyze them. That's something of a good news. Then for that goalkeeping department, personally, yes, there's one a certain number one in the hearts of Genotro. But in the hearts of some Nigerian fans, we also have our own number one in our hearts. Personally, I like to see Daniel Atei manning the sticks in this you know, encounter. But then Coach Genotro knows the best. He's called up people that he thinks can do the job. But then for Daniel Atei, he's also shown us that, yes, maybe we don't get to see him often in South Africa. He's also shown us that he can command the sticks of that uh, goalkeeping post he's got that reflex he's got you know that agility in him too you know he's got that confidence he's done he's not jittery even when his defense somehow exposes him or maybe, maybe when his defense is dragged out, out of position he can still stand maybe spread his frame come out on time come off his he's not scared to come off his lines he's also not scared to read the game so personally some of us would like to see Daniel like manning the sticks for the super Eagles of nigeria but you know we're expecting them to just get at least get out six points once again and see how far we can go from there certainly expectations for the super Eagles of nigeria and like you said Adeze, daisy after all is the central african republic with all due respect to them uh nigeria super Eagles should be expected to pick up all you know the six points on offer i mean off of the game they had against uh cape verde the, when the team at post-match uh, the NFF chairman was saying there's no first team, there's no second 11, there's no third 11. We are all the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Ah, just to, you know, chip that one in. But um, before Anthony gives us the, you know, total number of players or the names of the players in camp, like I said, everyone bought Moses Simon before we came into the studio at arrived camp. Let's make welcome for the chief, the big man, the freshest of all. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, man. Just so you know, man, the world is not ending. Anthony, when you walked, he was like, <laughs> waiting the album for you. <laughs> but Chuma Anali is in the building. Chuma, great to see you as always on a Tuesday. Welcome to Game On. Yeah, thanks. 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 It's a delight to be here, Sam. And uh, I love this guy from, from Niger Delta. You know, he, <laughs> he looks like one whose heart can give him shelter at the uh. moment. Uh, you know, are you a black belt? I just ask him. Why like Tony? Before the end of the show, we'll run health skills. Oh, yeah, You got to your right. Well, fantastic outfit, Tony. You you always find a way to outdo yourself with uh, all of these looks. And you know, that has basically taken her time to just um, dissect everything for us around the Super Eagles. And I don't think I need to stress myself adding any more. Mm -hmm. uh, at this stage, I'm not too carried away by this stage of the qualifying series. For me, man, I'm looking. I'm not. I'm not being condescending to the guys in the our group. Or, the bigger one is when five teams qualify from five groups, another five qualify from five groups, ten of them, and they have to battle over two legs in five fixtures for the sole ticket for, from each of those pairings. That for me is the biggest priority because, bro, that's when we'll now be talking about the likes of Algeria, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and that's the serious business. So this one is beat Central African Republic, get 12 points, you've qualified already for that phase, mm. but that's the most important phase in the conversation. All right, we'll talk about more. We'll talk more about the Super Eagles of Nigeria when we come back from this break. It's still game on on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Don't forget, guys, from the 8 p.m. hour, there's 10,000 naira to be given away right here on the show in celebration of our 10 year anniversary. Yes, and Nigeria Info and Femi and the gang is 10, so we'll be giving away 10,000 naira. But stick around more on that. And of course, the latest from the camp of the Super Eagles of Nigeria as we continue to try, you know, prepare for that qualifying encounter. Double header against the Central African Republic. Samuel Victor Ackman, Daisy Michael, Anthony The Voice, and of course, Chima Noli in the studio. Stick around, guys. We'll be right back very, very shortly.
many, many things with the woman down. We certainly aren't worried in the studio here. We're quite excited. So, Vector, I don't know what you're talking about when you Please, say that's that. That's my favorite song right now. I it love certainly the song. got you jumping. Honestly, I love the song, the <laughs> vibe, everything about the song is just up there. One of my, not, well, let's say one of my, no, my favorite song at the moment. Yeah, I like mm. it. Yeah. Of all the songs in the world. Yes, I like the song. Wow. Yeah. All right. Anthony, your favorite song in the world? My favorite. I mean, that's, is that's this really your favorite song in the world? That's what I'm asking. Of course not. I know you say bounce is your favorite song. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when when you say favorite song in the world, I mean the song world, never get tired. Tired of yeah, listening. Yeah, timeless, ageless. Um, you know, records and bounce doesn't come close. Really, it's really, really far far away. If it doesn't come close, why do you make me like it? It's a great song because it, it doesn't come close to being my very best in the world. Like you Okay, said. so what's your best mean... song in the world? I want to know, so I'll start listening to it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, okay, well, I'll, like I'll tell you one. One of my best songs. Oh, they're plenty? Yes. All right, what? When a Man Loves a Woman by Michael Bolting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on to the next one. Nice. <laughs> That's one of my best songs. You can go check it out and, and thank me later. But this is, this is me. This is for me for now. Okay. There, was, there was when it was... Uh, uh, La Dipo for me, uh, feeling. Now the song where I define me that oh. feeling. Yeah, 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 that was. I mean, these songs just come. You just vibe with them. Um, the moment another one comes up, then you you just you flip switch. to the next one. But then, yeah. All right, uh, Chuma. Can I ask what's your favorite song in the world? I'm looking to update my playlist. Let me guess. Let me guess now. Lullaby. <laughs> lullaby. Let me let Lullaby me let me know. I'll tell. No. No, it's not even a guess. Well, let me tell mo- you clearly. It's <laughs> <laughs> not true. Can I tell you his favorite song at the moment? <laughs> Please do. Joe Boy Alcohol. That's his favorite song. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you're gonna give me money for that. Interesting. Because it's the correct answer. I wonder what your favorite song in the world is. I'll give her alcohol. Mm. And if she doesn't drink it, she pays me a fine. Uh, but he knows I don't the last time, The last time, the last I did bars before the last one, did she? Did she? I don't do no, that. She does, that's so Why was she now saying it on the group like she don't hide? No, no. Nah. Nah. You know when external forces... Uh, <laughs> yeah, like external, <laughs> external. being carried away by... Not carried away, but the effect of external forces... Was sweeping her off her feet. The gas that was coming from external forces <laughs> was getting her high. You know, gasoline. Like. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to the show. This is Game Order 99.3 Nigeria Info. It's a full house. or near full house. The Samuel Victor Akban, the voice you're listening to earlier. You heard uh, the voice of Chuma, a Daisy Michael, and of course, Anthony the voice in the studio together we're taking you through the world of sports right here on game on on 99.3 we talked about the super Eagles of nigeria earlier on we're still going to st- stick with that conversation even as anthony tells us or announces or reels out the names of the names of all the players in the camp now in the super Eagles camp ahead of that a big big qualifying encounter against the central african republic yeah uh sam uh you were talking about uh, moses simon uh, well, prior to you coming into the studio, but mm-hmm. of course he's now with the team. He's now uh, joined. Yes, and the only player we are waiting for is Maduka Okoye, uh, the goalie of PSV. So, uh, Sparta Rotterdam, pardon. Uh, yeah, so for the players we have got in camp 22 as we speak, there's uh, Educate Chidera, who was the very first uh, to storm camp on Sunday. There's uh, Daniel Akpe, there's Paul Onuachu, there's Samuel Kalu. Uh, there's Kevin Akpoguma. Uh, good to see Kevin return back to the team. Uh, there's Jamlu Collins. There's Innocent Bonke, who retains uh, his place in the team from the last international break. There's Chidose Awazim Taiwo Awuni, uh, who replaced the injured Terry Murphy. Uh, there's William Trust Akong, Frank Onyeka, Leon Balogo, Joseph Aribo. There's Calvin Bassi. Well, uh, some people might be hearing that name for the very first time, but uh, he plays his football for Rangers in the Scottish League. He's a defender. Uh, so, as one player, we'll, we're, we're probably looking forward to There's uh, Ola Aina, Ahmed Musa, the captain of the side, Shil Abdullahi, Francis Uzoho, Kenneth Omero, Victor Simen, Kelechi Ihanacho, and of course, Mosi Simon. So, there you go 22 players in camp. As we speak, one expected Maduka Okoye. All right. So clearly the Super Eagles camp is buzzing and raring to go. But I don't know if this is um, good news or great preparation or maybe some will see it as a scathing remark. You know, ahead of that game, like even though we think, I think it's a general notion when we all say that um, we should, regardless of what, get the maximum points against Cape Verde home and away. But um, a former Super Eagles midfielder has spoken about the team as a whole. 
And this is what he's had to say. He says, on paper, it looks very clearly that we still pick the six, we will still pick the six points we have. But we have to be very careful because football is always played on the field of play. However, and this is the catchphrase now, he says, we lack that creativity in the midfield. Now, these are the words of the former Super Rigos midfielder and uh, former Monaco of France uh, midfielder, again, Victor Ipeba. He was speaking to you know an international media on Monday and he says... Um, you know, for him, Alex Iwobi has not done justice to being the most creative player, playing in that creative role in the Super Eagles team. He goes on to say, we don't have the players such as Okocha or Oruma in the midfield that can create chances for our strikers. In Africa, it's fine, but playing at the world stage, we need someone that is creative. Alex Iwobi can't do the job for us. This was what Victor Ikbeba had to say ahead of that qualifying encounter against the Central African Republic, which now leads me to my question, guys. I'm going to come to you, Anthony, and ask. Now, over the years, or let's let's bring it as you know, as early as the Gennett Raw era and talk about creativity in the Super Eagles Nigeria. He's always managed, you know, to get the results regardless. I think his winning percentage or ratio is quite um, decent, uh, yeah. above average, when you look at the number of games played and the number of wins recorded. Now, where it's, in your opinion... I think it's the best. It's the best of yeah, all the managers we've had. yes. All right. Uh, so that's credit to a feather in the hearts of uh, Gernot Raw. But where, in your opinion, Anthony, do you think lies the deficiency in the Super Eagles team? When you look at all departments, the goalkeeping department, Adesa spoke about um, the three goalkeepers we have. Um, I think for me, personally, it's a case of selecting the worst or the best of three <laughs> evils every time. You then think so? <laughs> you, then score you, then score you 2-0. You, then score you 1, you, then score you. Oh yeah, you keep this match. It's just me, you know, playing. But um, I don't think any of the goalkeepers, you know, better as the other one. It's just three goalkeepers on the same level for me. Um, then you look at the defense, you look at the midfield, and then the attack. Where do you think lies the comma? in mm. that Super Eagles team that can haunt us or has been haunting us under Gennard Raw? Well, I think I'll just keep it very, very short. Two two positions. Very first, you know, uh, the uh, the the goalkeeping position. Okay. Um, and then again, the creative midfield uh, So, is right when he says... I mean, absolute, absolutely. You just have to go back and highlight, um, you know, the contributions of our creative midfielders since 2016 um i think if i'm if if i'm not mistaking the player who have really contributed have got to be alex iwobi with uh, maybe 12 assisting how many years or 13. um really we don't have uh, that really superlative creative midfielder who can pick a pass from you know 30 40 yards out who have got that incisiveness who can really you know create something out of nothing mm -hmm. we don't have that and that lack of creativity is also affecting our set pieces and that's why set piece is also one of our big they could problems. win you matches absolutely you know so where when, when you talk about the lack of you know the creative midfielder this also tells on our inability to take advantage of you know dead balls at different parts of the game uh, alex have been a tad inconsistent really over the years and it is reflected on his career um and all of that even right now it's going to be really difficult for him to make his way into that everton team when he returns back from injury um i mean that tells you there are tons of players who are way ahead of him and he seemed to be our maybe best leg in terms of creativity. I don't know who else you well, want he's to. He's not a natural. Quality. He's not a natural he, he, he's, number ten, uh, as suggested what, what, by what, what, by here. He, I don't. If you say he's not a natural number ten, you may be right. Um, Alex can play, you know, from the flanks into the middle of the park. Um, he's played there before at Everton. He's played there at Arsenal. Mm -hmm. um, he's had the the opportunity to roam in and around that area where he can create. Uh, so I think that that so far, most of the goals that we have scored have come from the wingers for Team Nigeria. That's the wingers. They seem to be the ones who oftentimes create those chances. But right in the hole, behind the two forwards or, or behind the lone striker, whatever you want to play, whatever formation you want to play, we don't have that. Kelechi these days now wants to you know go up there and score 
All right. So um, gone are the days where you would you would say maybe he's also one that can pick a pass and all of that. Yes, he can pass on his day. But in terms of creativity, we do not have a special talent that you can see this player have been consistent. This player can create. I was hoping that, you know, likes of uh, Ibirichi is a, you know, uh, for Crystal Palace, Crystal would, have, Palace yeah, man, yeah. You know, would have wanted to uh, play for Team Nigeria and all of that. That's one player that you that you say is very creative and can be very good from set pieces. So, I mean, this deficiencies tells us so many things that we do not have what it takes to take on the world. We, we probably do not have what it takes to take on Africa. Let alone the world. Let alone the world. So, um, goalkeeping, we've had inconsistencies. Yes, Maduka seemed to be the man Coach General is trusting now. But you and I also know that he's got a long way to go with um, his growth and with his experience. That, be, that word, experience in goal, would always find a way to come haunt him. Yes, he's growing, but he's not there yet. He's not um Ayama, you know he i mean he's 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 really far so um that position and the creative position for me have got to be where we lack um you know depth and we lack options that can really win us games um these days we depend on our fast-paced wingers, wingers yeah and, and that pretty and much we depend determines on our the way we play strikers yeah so of, oftentimes we love to drag the ball wide and then, we cannot yeah. and and that's why people have said we cannot be intricate with our progression Passing. into the 18 yard box because we cannot you know smartly exchange passes and get past defenders without trying to find moses simon or samuel kalu you know on the left and right hand side so surely um but let's see let's see what happens going forward um, it's it's sad. There are still some parts of this team that you say in four years, Coach Genero hasn't yet found an answer to. And, five and the years. question is five years, you know. And and the question is when? When will these answers come? Because when you go play some of the finest in the world, little moments like this, little part of it does count. I mean, could define. But if he's getting the, the results, I mean, who cares about a creative midfielder? He's he's getting the the, the, the we, result to a certain extent. Let me yeah, yeah. let me quickly come just, in. Just just so, just so you can add on that. Okay. And should it be credit to Gennett Raw that despite that deficiency, he still managed to produce the goods? Well, that is how to know a good coach. I talked so about. He's a good coach. Well, uh, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that one. He's no, a good wait, coach. He's, he's a good, good coach. coach. Come on the pitch. He's a father. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good. No, no I, I have to give it to him. Good, yeah. good, good is is relative. relative. Yeah, he's so. he's good. Uh, he's a good coach off and on the pitch. Uh, let me just rub this in. I, I don't see a situation where you owe someone eight months and they're still working happily. They're mm. willing to work. That's a story for another day, yeah. which I'm willing to sink my teeth into. But then, apart from Tony talked about goalkeeping and creativity, mm -hmm. even the full backs and the centre backs, they're not as short. Mm. But then, how to know? For me, the, we need solid men in that centre back position. I mean, we're preparing. We're preparing for Afcon, right? We saw how our outing last time went. Let's not also expect too much. This is what we can offer at the moment. Some yeah. of our players are still young, they're still growing, a steady progress. Some are progressing at the lowest, uh, slower stage, and all that. But the the how to know a good coach is your ability to just make do with what you have. I, I think I was on the same same show with yeah. you on Sunday. Uh, the other day when I talked about there's no perfect lineup anywhere midfield. There must be a deficiency somewhere for your ability to argument. But then it doesn't take away the fact that in terms of scouting and recruitment, we can do a lot more better in that goalkeeping department. There are there are goalkeepers, I think, just the way they scout for some of these fullbacks. Uh, Bass is in it now. Bass, it looks like the, the Super Eagles of Nigeria is becoming an extension for uh, <laughs> Steven Gerrard and, and his boys. But then it is what it is. So far, they can come and do the job. So, uh, in terms of creativity, we're still lacking, like Tony talked about, you know. But then football is, has drifted away from that natural number 10. Number 10s are being drifted wide. If you, if you notice, those days of 4 4 2 formation has, you know, a given way for white football those days have given we saw to care winning the, the champions league with three four three then uh, pep guardiola and Jurgen club will always go with four three three so someone like messi is supposed to be a natural number 10 but then so sometimes he drives sometimes out, he drives wide, out yeah. wide just to, you know uh, get uh, find himself maybe to get himself into the team now i should say so but i think he needs to find a way and make around with it but that fullback i'm not assured apart from creativity creativity and goalkeeping we can still do some scouting in terms of that center back what's his name leo balogun is aging uh chidoze was a shaky and all off and on came to kenneth tomorrow i mean there's a reason why some of them uh, could not survive relegation last season in spanish like so i mean there's always there will always be room for improvement, Sam. 
No doubt, right. Tamo. And yeah. um, just to chip in very, very quickly as I stare at uh, no, stuff got, that could got, uh, cause a break. We've got four I, I, I think that, you know, in, in response to your question directly, which is, which is the weakest link for the Super Eagles at the moment, you can you know create a bit of an exception for that defense it's been around for a while okay is it the weakest link not necessarily i think the one that has been the weakest link since this guy came through you know has been that goalkeeping department and it's not corrected you know mm. um we all got excited when Iyama built himself to become one of the best not just on the continent but a guy who even Lionel messi had respect for after you know one of those world cup experiences and over the years we've had ikishu Shurumu who did great too during his time forget about the mistakes um of Peter Rufai in France 98 when he came on and, and was dashing Denmark chances to score goals <laughs> against us. Rufai is a great sport. He only had got three fingers. Too. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think age caught up with him at that point. <laughs> that's you know, so, so that, that was the reality. But we've, we've been sports for, for choices sometimes as Nigerians. Aloya Go was a great goalkeeper too. Kali Keme came in to prove to us that we were not going to miss Yama that much yeah. because he also held his own the goalkeeper for Wolves that year before Luke came happened. and took him, took him off uh, the scene. But since that guy left, man, we've just been dancing around. You know, Adizia has found a way to eulogize. Um, you know, the guy who plays in South Africa. Yeah, he's, man. He's, he's, he's a good guy, yeah. Mm. But, man, Muno forgets it. That Algeria game, semi finals of the AFCON, it was him. That free kick. Let's it was him. Ah, it was the, the best goalkeeper. Yeah, ah, not, not, not the best yeah. goalkeeper will not say that. The placement, <laughs> placement, <laughs> placement. You know, yeah, so yeah, play, the, the best goalkeeper, Kotua and uh, Alison will not get a finger to that. Placement, placement. He was, he was, that was, that was a power driver of a freak. Come on, guys. Exactly. That free kick you know, was mad. So, so that, the best goalkeeper won't that's catch the it. point, you know. So, and these are the things that we lack. These are the things we lack. So, uh, the World Cup in 2018, we saw an 18-year-old who we all got excited about, Francis Uzo who yeah. later got married very early. You know, he was the goalkeeper for Genot Roy in the World Cup. Oh, this is the next best thing after sliced bread, as people who love to say. And then Uzo Ho fell out of favour, not even at national team level. Also had issues at club football level too. And then, you know, someone and several people spoke so much gloryingly about a guy who was playing in the third division in German football. And uh, we all got excited. Fine boy, Maduka Okoye, come through. He moved on to uh, the Dottery DVC. He felt like it was going to be growth in his career. I remember seeing a tweet over the weekend talking about him making saves but still conceding goals anyhow. <laughs> you know, so he's had his own glorious moments, but he's also vulnerable too. And so all of the three names I've called, whether it's Akwei or whether it's Uzo Ho, or it's uh, Maduka Okoye, they all have deficiencies. We know what goalkeepers can do for teams. You know, there was there was a certain Schmeichel who was magical for Denmark years back. Not even his son now, Peter himself. There was a certain guy for Paraguay that year, Chilavet, who yeah, used to yeah. score goals. There was a guy for who Mexico kicks. in USA 94, the flamboyant goalkeeper. His name has just gone off my head. He was very young, USA 94. Um, and he was fantastic too. So goalkeepers carry teams. And Yama did that for the Super Eagles too. Benjamin Mendy is doing that for Chelsea oh, at the moment. Manuel Neuer heart, has done that heart. for Bayern Munich. Donnarumma you know? did that for so, Italy. So, so we need, if we can have a goalkeeper that our defence can be confident in, bro, every other thing will fall into place. We have strikers who can score goals. Even when we don't have a creative midfielder, well, somehow we can manage what we have because we have strikers who are very efficient for their clubs in Europe. So the defence, like I said, the Ibo war, they're not the old chair, but they're still there. We can manage them, at least for an AFCON. But where we cannot manage is the goalkeeping department. And that's what led to our eviction from the AFCON. You so think so, Chuma? Adese could be a, defen a defense counsel. <laughs> Honestly, point, that freaky game. Hey, hey. <laughs> that freaky <laughs> We need to take a look at it again. That freaky right. was mad. All right. Uh, we'll talk some more about this uh, when we come back from the group, from the, the break. We'll wrap up on the Super Eagles conversation and give you the chance to play for 10,000 Naira at the anniversary in Osara. If I can put it that way. It's still <laughs> ongoing. Oh, the giveaway is still <laughs> ongoing, really. So uh, after the break, we're going to play for 10,000 Naira. Lucky winner. One lucky winner will get to win 10,000 Naira on the show today. But we have to go on that break. Zeta is calling. When we come back, we'll switch the conversation and talk boxing and tennis as well right here on Game On on 99.3 Nigeria. Info. Stick around, guys. We will be right, right back.